Okay, so let's get started into C Sharp's yield statement. If I remember right, yield came in in C Sharp 2.0. I might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Um, basically, it makes making iterating over objects a lot easier. So let's just get right into an example. I'm going to make a static uh, I enumerable int uh, get random numbers method here and um, just for tickles let's let's pass in int count okay so, so let's make a static random ran gets new random and the reason I make this static is um, it's good to make one random object for your entire uh, program because if you don't you can end up newing up a bunch of randoms and if you new them up within the same like clock tick or whatever you get the same sequence of random numbers every time so it's not really as random as it should be so it's it's a good thing to make this static out here just, just share it amongst the, amongst the whole program okay so I'm gonna it, since I need to return an enumerable of int uh, one of the built-in data structures that does that is a list so that's easy list of int int gets new list of int and then um, for tab tab in i less than zero i less than count i plus plus I'm going to remove the extra curlies because that's just my programming style you don't necessarily have to it's dot add uh, rand dot next okay and then I'm going to return ints all right so now then down here you know, now I have this little helper method, get random numbers, and, and I can say, okay, well, for each, for each, uh, for each int, int num and get random numbers, uh, console write line num. Oh, and of course I have to, have to specify how many random numbers we want, so let's do 10. Okay, run it, and you see we have random numbers, rather large random numbers, but random numbers nonetheless. And that works fine, except this is a little bit, it feels, hopefully it feels a little clunky to you. I have to make this list, shove a bunch of data into it, and then return return the list. In fact, if I wanted to be even slightly more optimal, I should tell the list uh, up front, I'm going to use count so that the list doesn't have to do any internal reallocations and that kind of thing. Um, Go watch some of the data structures videos if you want to know how a list works internally and how there's some over overhead. Anyway, so, I don't know, it's kind of clunky. You have to new up this list and have to return it and all that kind of stuff. Well, in C Sharp 2.0, uh, they, they gave us what they call iterator blocks, and it's kind of confusing the terminology. I wouldn't really worry about it. Um, but basically, uh, you can use yield to do the same thing. So let me just show you. I no longer need this temporary list, and uh, I could just... Instead of shoving this into a list, I can say yield return ran dot next, and and that's it. That's a little method. So if I run this, uh, looking at the output here, yes, again rather large numbers, same result, and I didn't have to make that temporary list. Now, when you use yield in a C sharp program, you're basically taking a bag of sugar, and literally a bag of sugar, and dumping it on your code. But it's actually not too bad. I'll, we'll we'll dissect it in future videos. But well, basically, that's the basic yield there. I want to show you how to kind of step through this and and see how it works differently. It's you're used to return, and once we say return, the method returns and is done. But with yield return, it's it's kind of like this method sticks around and returns several values instead of one. And I said it would return several values, kind of by saying I enumerable. So let's just uh, I'm going to f11 step through this a little bit, show you. Uh, for each num and get random numbers, watch what happens when I hit F11. We don't even step in to get random numbers. Okay, and we'll see, we'll see why in a future video, but F11, and then now once we say in, once we get to the in part, did you notice I was on the in? In, then we go to get random numbers, and the for loop starts, and it says I less than count, yield return a random number, and then look, we jump back out, and we write line num, look at num, num's a big random number, so then I'm going to hit F11 again, and notice what happens when I jump I jump from the in here. I go back into get random numbers. And not only do I go back into it, I go back into where I left off, I++. Okay, remember, we left off, last time we left this method, we left on the yield return, which is, kind of makes sense. It's like return, okay, we returned. 
And then we come back and we say, hey, we need another random number. And then it jumps to where this I++, plus plus, it's, it saves its state in a way. Anyway, and I less than count, well, no, I is only one. So we're going to jump back out to main, uh, right line the next number, and then back and forth between these two methods. So it's, it's kind of like this for each is interspersed inside of this for loop up here. It's, it's, it's it's kind of like these methods are working together. Yes, there's a ton of sugar going on. Yes, we'll dissect it in a future video. But that's that's the basic gist of a yield.